How's it going, everybody? Hopefully everyone's having an awesome week. Hopefully everyone is still enjoying time with their family. My Christmas was um, on Monday, just like everyone else. I went to visit my, uh, my mom. And, and that was it. I mean, we had a nice dinner, had a nice talk. And that was pretty much it, or, or as much as I want to devolve or devolve. And I was going to have a different topic today. That may be, you know, th a Thursday topic. But that being said, we got to talk about this terrible, terrible idea. You know, there was this movie called Jurassic Park. Maybe you're aware of it. I'm aware of it. I came out when I was just a little lad. I enjoyed the heck out of that movie. It was a fun little movie, but also had a message of not resurrect things that have been extinct. But what is resurrection biology? Well, this story comes from Ground.News, why resurrection biology is gaining traction around the world. Resurrection biology aims to bring molecules and organisms back to life with the ultimate goal to de-extinct mutation. Scientists are studying zombie viruses from Earth samples to understand the risks they pose. There's also been several movies about extinct viruses that have been pulled up from ice cores that has um, a negative effect on our planet, or at least the human population. Not a good idea, in my personal opinion. Researchers use ancient DNA to discover new drug candidates. Genetic information from extinct human relatives and animals are being mined to find bacterial fighting molecules. Colossus Bioscience is working on an ambitious project to revive the extinct species, including the woolly mammoth and the dodo. However, finding suitable habitats and creating altered hybrid forms pose challenges. Well, you know, maybe just because we can doesn't mean we should. What's going to be the impact of reviving these creatures? No, I'm just curious. I don't know this comes from CNN. Why Resurrection Biology is Gaining Traction Around the World by Katie Hunt, CNN. Seven Minute Read, updated 8. 58 a.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday, December 26, 2023. Scientists have isolated and revived ancient viruses from thawing permafrost. Yeah, no, that, no, no. I don't even know what that is, but it, it's, it's, it's gross. And they shouldn't revive it. it even has a little... Skull right here. I mean, you have to have some imaginations. There's the forehead, the two eyes, kind of the nose right there, you know. Resurrection biology is attempt to bring strings of molecules and more complex organisms back to life is gaining traction in labs around the world. The work is a far cry from genetically engineered dinosaurs that escaped in the blockbuster movie Jurassic Park, although some scientists, the ultimate goal is to de-extinct and resurrecting animals and plants that have been lost. Other researchers are looking past new sources of drugs. Oh, pass. Oh, looking to the past for new sources of drugs or sound an alarm of the possibility of long dormant pathogens in the, in the field of study. It's also about recreating elements of human history in an attempt to better understand how our ancestors might have lived and died. I mean, I get that there's some noble causes here. But resurrecting or bringing back something is going to have issues on itself. Here are four fascinating research projects that is emerging in the field that launch or made significant progress in 2023. I wouldn't exactly say it's fascinating. I would say it's kind of scary, but that's just my personal opinion. 
Let's hear warmer temperatures in the Arctic are thawing in the region's permafrost, a frozen layer of soil beneath the ground, potentially st stirring viruses that are that after lying dormant for tens of thousands of years can endanger animals and human health. I mean, like I said, it's a noble cause because we want to identify them and hopefully find a way to prevent them from being transferred to humans or if they do get transferred to humans or other animals, be able to treat them. So I'm not completely against the idea. I'm just highly cautious against the idea. Let's put it that way. Jean Michael Clavier, a professor emeritus of medicine and geomet geno mix at the ALX Marshall University School of Medicine in Marshall, France, is seeking to better understand the risk posed by what he describes as zombie viruses by resurrecting the viruses from Earth samples from Siberia. See here, Calvier managed to revive a virus in 2014 that he and his team isolated from permafrost, making it infectious for the first time in 30,000 years by inserting it into a cultured cell. Why are you making it infectious, bro? In his latest research published in February, Clavier and his team isolated several strains of ancient viruses from multiple samples of the Earth, representing five new families of viruses. For safety, he has chosen to, to study the viruses that can only target single-cell amiibos, not animals or humans. I'm not a scientist or a doctor, but I kind of know how viruses start. They go for amiibos, and from amiibos, they do um, more multi-cell items or creatures, and they build their way up to where it gets more complex. I'm just saying, the oldest was nearly 48 1,500 years old based on radial carbon dating of the soil and it came from a sample of the earth taken from the underground lake 52 feet 16 meters below the surface. The young samples were found in the stomach contents and coats of a woolly mammoth remains were 27,000 years old. The amoebo infecting viruses is still infectious after so long as a signal of a serious potential health threat, Javier said. So yeah, I mean, this is where I'm kind of okay. If you're doing this to prevent these from infecting us and knowing about them, that's one thing. But if you want to revive them for the sake of reviving them, that's where I'm going to have issues. We view these amoebo-infected viruses as surrogates for all other possible viruses that might be in the permafrost. Clavier told CNN earlier this year, our reasoning is that if the amoeba virus are still alive, there is no reason why other viruses will not still be alive, capable of infecting their own hosts. Hunt for new antibiotics go back to the Ice Age. The bioengineering pioneer Cesar de la Fuentes, president and assistant professor at the University of Pennsylvania, the past is a source of opportunity has opened up a new front in the fight against drug-resistant superbugs, which is... So we found penicillin, which was a way to fight against certain bugs. We started using penicillin. Those bugs evolved to resist penicillin. We come up with another antibiotic. It's never ending, really never ending of these bugs evolving to do drug resistant. I'm not saying that we shouldn't try, 
But at the end of the day, there's only so much we could do. Advances in recovery of ancient DNA from fossils means the detailed libraries of genetic information about extinct human relatives and long gloss animals are now being publicly available. The Machine Biology Group he leads at UPenn uses intelligent based com computational methods to mine the genetic information and identify small proteins or peptide molecules they believe to have bacteria fighting powers. He has discovered promising compounds from the the Nandrolos and the, the Ander Falls of the ice creatures such as the woolly mammoth and the giant sloth. It has enabled us to uncover new sequences, new types of molecules that we have not previously found in living organisms, expanding the way that we think about molecular diversity. De La Fuentes said, bacteria from today have never faced those molecules, so they may give us a better opportunity at targeting the pathogen that are problematic today. Most antibiotics come from bacteria and fungi that has been discovered by screening microorganisms that live in the soil, but in recent decades, pathogens have become more resistant to many of these drugs because of widespread overuse. Like I said, it's creating that cycle. We come up with something new, the, the viruses or the bacteria then evolves and, to counteract those. While the La Fuentes approach is unorthodox, the urgency to identify possible candidates has never been greater as the global population faces nearly 5 million deaths each year. Their association with um, microbial resistance, according to the World Health Organization. So you're aware of the other ones. What do Egyptian mummies smell like? I mean... Here we go, we want to plotting the resurrection of Dodo, Woolly Mammoth, and the Tasmanian Tiger. But why? Why should we do that? Is my question. Um, I'm not going to read the rest of this because I don't really care what Egyptian mummies smell like. And I don't think it's a good idea to resurrect these creatures. They're, they're dead. I mean, you can make a, a, a strong case with the dodo bird because we were intentionally slaughtering them because they had no fear for us. But at the same time, what's going to be the impact of them? Of them being reintroduced? I mean, I know that we're reintroducing the wolves in Colorado and the Yellowstone Park area, and they've seen some positive impacts from that. But those creatures still exist today. I don't know. What's 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 your thought? What leave a comment down below on what your thoughts are about resurrecting the dodo and the woolly mammoth, or even digging up or reviving zombie viruses. Do you share my cautiousness in doing so? Just leave a comment down below on what your thoughts are about this. But most importantly, have yourself a wonderful day, morning or evening.